question 14. Thirteen. All right. Thirteen. Says. Let's see. On end time prophecy, the Lord Jesus Christ told his disciples to beware of false prophets that a come among you as gentle as doves, but inwardly are serpents. B, come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravening wolves. C, come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are goats. Or D, come preaching the light but in them is only darkness and evil. A, B, C, or D. B. All right. Let us uh, check out the scriptures uh, given to us. Matthew 7, from the Lord Jesus Christ himself speaking. Matthew seven fifteen. Brother, please. Amen. So, uh, what the Lord Jesus Christ is telling us that no matter what the preacher says, we need to also study our scriptures. We need to open the scriptures to find out whether what they have said, whether or not it's right, because they may be preaching something sweet but between or beneath what they are saying, they are actually trying uh, to cause a greater harm. They want to just uh, do something harmful and uh, you know, take advantage of you. And we've already gone through it. So uh, that's what he commanded. And so uh, it is important that all Christians I also study the scriptures, not to just say that uh, God says, and then we come to church, we hear it, and we don't open our own scriptures, because it is by opening it, by examining it, that God will give us more, greater insight, deeper understanding of what the word of God says. So uh, what he is saying is that he's warning us that don't just, uh, I mean, it's good to listen, but I pray for the discernment of God's Holy Spirit because they, there are many people who are false. You know, they say they are telling you the truth, but in actual fact, they have ulterior motives. They are wolves, and wolves don't come to just be playing with a the sheep. They come to attack, they come to steal, they come to kill. And so uh, the prophets also, well, when they say prophets, that in those days, that's what they were called. But nowadays, we call them pastors, we call them ministers, we call them, uh, you know, leaders. Even it could be anywhere. And so one has to be really careful what we hear and not to just hear everything and not examine. We have to examine it also on our own. All right, so that's uh, what we've been warned. So may the Lord uh, continue to guide us. So. Uh, the answer is, according to what we've just said, uh, true truth, it is uh, the, those who come in and uh, try to say they are this when they are not. So one has to be careful. Uh, they come and then uh, B is uh, correct. So true truth. Question 14. In his letter to the Thessalonians, the Apostle Paul described the day of the Lord coming upon people as a thief in the night, which is in 1 Thessalonians 5, 2. But what did the Lord Jesus Christ describe it as? A. A snare. 
B, a fire, C, a whirlwind, or D, a great and mighty wonder. All right. Let's uh, see what the scriptures tell us. Luke 21, 35, Samuel. Luke chapter 21, verse 35. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Amen. 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 What is a snare? A snare is a trap. A snare is something that makes you feel that, oh, there's nothing there. A snare is like a, a bridge. But the bridge, you look at it in the, uh, during the World War, we all know that there were so many traps, so many snares. People, you, the soldiers will see a, a nice bridge. Say, oh, yeah, we can cross it. The, the river is down there, all right? But then, they say, this is a nice, uh, we can cross over and go to the enemy territory. And nobody's on it. It's good. And you get on it thinking that, oh, yeah, you can just drive you know, cross in one minute and when you get there, you find that there's a trap. Either the bridge is a fake bridge or something and you end up, uh, you know, in the entrapment. So A is correct. Question true, true, A. So 15, God wants us to be uh, careful of those things that... Uh, the Apostle Paul warned that um, the Lord is coming. He's coming as a thief in the night. What he is saying is that everybody must be on guard. Every Christian. You can't just say that, oh, I'm a Christian. Oh, I'm already a believer. I'm going to now go somewhere and start doing what I want. I won't live a godly life. I won't obey God. I won't stick with what God has said. I will just, oh, the covenant, the proclamation, no, they are not necessary for me. You know, I can continue to sin. I can do anything. No. God says, no. Live a righteous life. Be holy, for I am holy. And so we have to continue to live that godly life which God has called us out of and not to go back to those uh, things. Fifteen. In the book of Revelation, there is recorded a letter from the Lord Jesus Christ to the Laodiceans who saw themselves as rich and not needing anything, how did the Lord Jesus Christ see them, the Laodicean, the church, the people at Laodicean, or people of nowadays, or Christians of nowadays? A, wretched and miserable. B, poor and blind. C, naked. Or D, all of the above. A, B, C, or D? D. All right. So let's see uh, what he says. Revelation 3, 14 to 17, and I'll read. The Lord Jesus Christ says, As Christians, we have to put on that clothing of humility. And if by God's grace, we have uh, known something or we have uh, heard something or we have become uh, spiritually uh, greater and brighter than other people, we are to still humble ourselves. And uh, there was somebody who had great power, who, had, uh, who was clothed in uh, also majesty, who, who was very, very... Uh, you know, there was so much wonder and amazement, and people say, "Oh, wow! This person, uh, he is really blessed." And what happened to him? Uh, I think we'll get to that in Isaiah seven when we get there. So let's see what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying now in uh, Revelation three fourteen 
chapter 17 where he says and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these things saith the Amen the faithful and true witness the beginning of the creation of God 15 I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. Alright? 16. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will speed thee out of my mouth. 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have neither, I have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked you know so let's continue verse 18 i i counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and not and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. And 19 says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be, jeal be zealous, therefore, and repent. So, amen. That is God's uh, commandment. So, what Christ is telling the church, any church, telling us, anybody who says they are Christian, is that, yes. Uh, you, you have some spirituality in you, you have some godliness in you, but it seems you are not hot, you are not cold, you are on the fence, you are sitting in between. When people are going into sin, you join them. When people are going to church, you join them. When people say they won't go to church, you still join them. So you are everywhere and you are neither hot nor cold. And uh, at the same time, God says, those who are that way, those who are into idol worship, those who, who are into things of the world and, and still part of uh, the Christian world, you can't be both. You have to be one or the other. And so Christ is saying, don't do that. If you do that, I will vomit you out of my mouth because uh, that's not what Christianity is. My Christianity is that you have to live uh, wholly obedient to uh, what I have commanded and not go left or right and also uh, to remember that when you try to add other things to it, it becomes a uh, void. So uh, he says he is now cancelling uh, the Christians, you know, uh, that we should buy, you know, we should buy God's word. We should buy it. It's free. You know, he gives it to us free, but we shouldn't sell it. So when he says we should buy because uh, what is happening is that you know we are still naked. When you are sinning, you are in you are filled with nakedness. You don't have any. Uh, there's no nakedness uh, or anything to cover you. But when you are covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, but when you are obediently following God's word, then it means that everything else will go as God has said, and that uh, you know the whole idea was that they were proud. They had uh, reached a stage where they thought, well, you know, I am, um, you know, you can't tell me anything. I'm already a Christian. I'm already uh, this, so I'm not, you can't do much. So uh, I'm, 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 I'm good. So uh, nobody can tell me anything. So I will do what I want. But God says, uh, no, we have to always uh, live in obedience to his word uh, so that mm, it is uh, the will of God and uh, We'll, we'll see. So, uh, let's see uh, another reference of what we are talking about so that we can get um, so Isaiah did I say 7 or 14 is alright, it's actually 14 that I wanted to say so let's see what pride comes, uh, what pride makes uh, people do. 
and uh, you know, so um, all right, Brasama, please read uh, Isaiah 14, starting from 12 to 20. Isaiah chapter 14 from verse 12 to 20. How are you falling from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground? You who weaken the nations, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest side of the north. 